Welcome back to Enlighten Up for episode 48, the birth of an asshole, praying with expectations, business deals with God, and saving Brian's soul. Okay, everyone, you're in for a special treat today because you get to deal with everything that we always deal with, and that is Brian. We're putting Brian into the hot seat today to let us know why he feels the way he does about God. When did he lose faith in the fact that God actually existed? So we're going to hear his story, and while we hear his story, we're also going to hear how much of an asshole he has become because of it. Yeah, you're all going to hear that, and you're going to see what we all deal with. But at the end of the day, we all love each other. So let's just jump right into the episode and hear what dear Brian has to tell us. Welcome back to Enlighten Up, everyone. Uh, Thanks for joining us again this week. We are excited to put Brian in the hot seat. We've all shared our experiences and our spiritual journeys, but we really haven't gone into fine detail about Brian's journey and why he currently has the beliefs that he has. So today's episode, we're going to get into a few different discussions that were kind of inspired by uh, one evening at a whiskey bar very recently between Lisa, Brian and I, and uh, we're going to revisit parts of that conversation with all of you and uh, let you all in on why Brian is so effed up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think I was going to say? Why Brian's such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could probably answer both. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Brian such an F- asshole? That's my husband you're talking about. Be nice. <laughs> Have you ever said the F word on, on this uh, show, Nicole? Has Brian? No, have you? Fuck. Oh yeah, sure yeah. I have. I don't know. I, I just didn't feel no, like. No, I'm trying to remember when you have. I was like, when you said effed up, I'm like, that's unusual. I, Why didn't you just go for it? I, I, you know, I felt like it was a little bit bold for an opening line, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh, attention grabber, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, I'm on, I'm on the hot seat. Huh? You're on the hot seat. You know, Lisa, oh. Michael, and I have all shared some of our deeper pains in life, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Y- We'd like to hear from you. Wow. Um, gosh, born and raised in the Midwest, uh, the heart of Lutheran country. And I was raised uh, in the, the Lutheran Church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, for, for those people that know that stuff. Um, and my parents are devout Christians. I was, you know, like I said, raised in the church, went to church every Sunday, had to dress up, you know, every Sunday. Um, my dad actually, when he went to college, uh, he studied to be a minister and then switched gears and became a, became a grade school teacher. And he always, uh, taught the Bible study at the at the church. He would fill in a lot of times, um, you know, for the for the pastor if they were if they were away. Um, he still does today. Um, still does today. Leads Bible studies and they they go to church every Sunday. I do not go to church every Sunday or any Sunday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why? Why don't you go to church well, I anymore? Say that. I, I went last Christmas with my parents, and I, and I do still enjoy certain aspects. Um, you know, church was just this, I mean, it was just this, it was just a thing. I mean, it was all your friends, you know, in high school, they all went to church every Sunday. And, you know, I went to church every th- Sunday, and it and it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. Um, one of my close friends in high school, we went to the same church. Actually, not a lot of my friends went to that same church that, that I did, but we always, you know, sat in the back and, you know, goofed off. Um, it was more about community and socializing. Sure. Sure. Um, you know, was, went to, you know, went to communion and just, I just did all those, all those normal things that, that, um, a lot of Americans. A lot do. that most of Americans do. I would, I would, I would say most, not just a lot. But when I went to college, it was like vacation. 
I, uh, <laughs> I did not. I did not go to church. I want to interject Sundays. something there. Just Brian's mother told me that him going to college saved her. I think she said from killing him. <laughs> <laughs> Or something to that effect, like save the relationship. Like, thank God he left and went to college. Yeah, well, I mean, the feeling was the feeling was mutual. I, uh, I I went to college out of state, made sure I was far enough away. But it, it did strengthen my relationship with with my parents. You know, I missed them. Um, actually, you know, probably had a drinking problem. Not probably did have a drinking problem in high school. Um. I grew up in a really small town, um, 6,000 people in the middle of, uh, you know, the Midwest in, in Missouri, southwest of Missouri, just the middle of nowhere. And, you know, at a certain at a certain age when alcohol became available, that's kind of all there was to do. So you go out on the weekends and you go hang out with your friends and you drink a lot. And, you know, unfortunately, this, this story repeats itself today with a lot of teenagers, but there's a lot of drinking and driving. I, I bet I went to six or seven funerals in my last two years of, of high school because of, you know, drunk driving. Accidents. Really? Um, oh, absolutely. That was, I mean, it was, it was normal. I mean, there were a couple of times when I looked at the, the little local newspaper the next day to see if there was some sort of hit and run because I don't remember driving home. <laughs> Oh my um, God! I'm worried about you. Yeah, they know they were worried about me when I was after I was already accepted into college. I must have been a senior. Um, they actually threatened. It was an empty threat. Thank God. I don't know. Why I just said thank God. So I don't believe in him. Um, <laughs> um, it was habits. It was yeah, exactly habits. Um, it was it, it was an empty threat, but they threatened. They said you can go to AA or you can go to college. You know, you need to stop. You need to stop drinking. I mean, I would just come home, just shit, just completely shit faced. Um, just pass out and you know black out the next day. I mean, it was just. And you're just, not a big drinker, Dan. No, you I'm like not, your whiskey, I'm not, but you're I'm not, not a drunk. Get drunk. Kind, I'm not that kind of that not that kind of drinker. I just I just put it on the the situation. You know, I I don't mean it to sound like a cop out but yeah, i think i was just a product of growing up in the country and it's it's what happened where i was from um but you know fortunately it was an empty threat i went to college and because i did not stop drinking but i went to college um actually got arrested my very first weekend in college um at a at a party you know underage drinking um and i was on probation uh, from, you know, from the state that I, so I grew up in Missouri, went to school in Indiana, Ball State University. And, uh, but back to, back to religion, I, I, you know, I didn't care. It wasn't, even though I was raised to be very devout, it didn't take, it didn't stick to a point where, I'm in college. Oh, I have to find my local church and I have to be involved. So I just went through, you know, college life and went every once in a while, you know, probably went on Easter, or, you know, who knows when I went, but I do remember going to a church at least maybe once or twice when I was in college. Major holidays. <laughs> What's that? Major holidays. Yeah. I, yeah. Which, which is normal. I don't remember being a holiday, but it must've been because I can't believe that I went on just some random Sunday. Unless you did something terrible maybe yeah. you need that, that I was not Catholic. Oh that's right. I was not raised Catholic so I did not have to go and you know Confession. confess my sins. I could sin as much as I wanted. <laughs> um, and I did. So but but what's really interesting and, and I think this is gonna surprise you all all you guys um, because based on what I just said my story after graduation should have been a continuation. However, my mind was such that after graduation, it was, okay, time to stop being a college student and time to start being a young professional. And then in my mind, I decided, well, what does it mean to be a young professional? One of those things was to go to church. 
not because I believed in God, but because this is what society expects. You're not in college. You're a professional in the community. You're trying to be a member of the community. That means you're a member of a church. You know, having some insight into your Akashic records right now is making this story so much more (laughs) easy to understand. You know, like everything that you do is not based in faith, but more in the idea of the secular path. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's exactly what it was. Society, not church says go to church. Society says go to church. So I went, I went to church, but me being who I am, I don't do anything half-assed. I go all the way. So I didn't just go to church and just become a member of church. I became a leader in that church. I became a thought and spiritual leader. I was actually the president of the congregation at a very young age. I was 26, 27 years old, and I was president of the congregation. Um, and did tours of the church on the weekends, and you know, it was a historic church, and I was in historic preservation, and ended up that's where I met my uh my first wife. Because you didn't go to school to be a landscape architect. You went to be a historic. Right. I, I was I was in city planning uh, and historic preservation, not landscape architecture at the time when I went to, when I went to school. So I was doing all these things. My best friend was super religious, and I would go to Bible studies and and uh, I went to a Promise Keepers event in in Denver, and this laughter can happen, you know, in the audience at this point. Um, about the whole Promise Keepers organization, but it it was a so that was you know I'm 20 let's say I'm 25 on and then I meet who was to become my 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 wife my first wife and that continued that continued you know when I got married. We got married in the church, raised our daughter in the church. My daughter, actually up until a couple of years ago, believed in God. Um, I heard she was going through a transition about not believing in God. And now that she doesn't talk to me at all, I don't know what that was going on. Um, But I was never that super... I don't want to say faithful. I mean, I, I guess I was faithful. I don't know. I was, I was there. I was go. It meant a lot to me. You know, I donated time to the church. I donated money. I always designed things as a landscape architect. I gave significant gifts to the church. I was always on committees. Did it feel and, like out of duty you had to do this? Like it was a dutiful type thing more than a. <laughs> it's still I, societal. Say that again. Or still societal. Yeah, yeah I, I just, it was normal. I, 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 I think Michael's maybe more, more correct. It was just, it's just what you do. I mean, Brian, you're like describing my life. <laughs> it's like, oh, I know exactly what you've been through. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was just, I'm in church. I'm going to volunteer. I, I'm going to do these things. No, I even like remember going to church as an adult. But I think, okay, before I say that, I think a big proportion of the population is, is like us. Because I see people that go to college, never go to church, and then until they have their first kid. And then all of a sudden, they have their first kid, and they have this new transition into love or whatever that is. And they start going to church because they think that's what society would do. That's what people would do when they have something like this. I I would say I was a little bit more on the churchy side, or at least I played that part, um, than just I'm doing this to cover my, my, you know, (laughs) <laughs> insurance for your life my my, my eternal souls yeah. <laughs> um, I everyone around me was like really believed my ex-wife really believed my daughter did my parents did my in-laws like everybody was just like God is great and I said the word but I don't know if I ever believed it because keep in mind <laughs> I went into you know I was in a design curriculum which is more along the lines of science we talked about this a couple weeks ago 
Um, and there's not a lot of believers. There was one guy in, I remember in college that was like a Bible basher. And I was like, yeah, that's weird. And that, I was, I was never, I was never that guy. And I always found it weird in my profession. There's always the one guy. There's always the one guy that just, just a Bible basher, just loves God. And, you know, you know, wears his heart on his sleeve. That was never me. But that does remind me of, of, of a story as I got, I, I think I got further and further away from God being in the design profession. And I remember, I don't know if this is the right time to say it from a timeline point of view, but I remember when I, when I first became a landscape architect and we all went out as a bunch of colleagues, we all went out to dinner, we were traveling or whatever for work. And this really good friend of mine, he commented seven years later how he saw me change because I changed. And I'm sure this is why one of the reasons why I ended up getting a divorce because I got further and further away from God and the church. But he said, I remember when you first started with us and we all went out to dinner that one time, you bowed your head and prayed before dinner. And I would do that. I would go out to eat by myself and I would, I would pray. And then he said, by the time you were done with us or we were done with you, (laughs) You were the furthest away. I mean, like you were the first one to to be debaucherous, and it it was it was really it was a hard thing to hear. You know, even though I didn't believe in God when He told me that, it was a really hard thing to hear that. Yeah, you were this really kind and respectful person, and then you turned into something it's an else. Asshole. <laughs> and, 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 and I really and I really do believe that was a big part of my, my divorce. I mean, my, my ex-wife even said that, you know, you were this very kind Christian man when I met and married you and you turned into something else. Oh, that's very interesting. Why I would be so curious to understand the deeper layers to that. When I peel back the first layer, I see being in the, being surrounded by designers that don't care about God. That's really what I see. I was in you know, my first job out of college, I was a city planner. It's a little, it's a more conservative, it's not a design oriented thing. Um, everybody that I went to work with, they all went to church, you know, even though this was or, in Boulder. Okay, wait, hold on a second. But you've just told us for the last, you know, 15 minutes that you never really cared about your faith. It was never you were actually faithful you were just doing it for societal reasons it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like i was full of the holy spirit yeah when so I, when I think back do on you it think, i don't i don't remember that do you think that being with these designers actually gave you permission to be who you truly were as opposed sure. to putting on the act sure that's fair I, I i think that's i think that's really fair that i was able to be who who I was, and I wasn't minded people. I, you know, the people that I was around before, it was always, you know, I, I cared about that. But when I got married and I had a kid, I was like, okay, I don't have to care anymore. I'm, I'm the hard work's done. Now it's like life's on cruise control. I think when you're faithful, I mean, if you're truly faithful, the people around you aren't going to change that. I mean, I. You may change your habits a little bit, but you're always going to remain faithful. Right, right. And if that's truly who you are. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I haven't thought about it enough ahead of time to, was it pretend? Was I pretending to be faithful or was I really faithful? I would think I was really faithful. I just wasn't. I mean, you were just really programmed. I just, it was easy for me to be, it was just as easy to be not faithful as it was to be faithful. I mean, can you, are you talking about like certainty? Because like, I feel like all of us throughout life go up and down on our certainty of God exists or not. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a big part of it. I remember when, when, while I was still dating um, my, my first wife and we were doing like premarital counseling I was just doing it with my with my pastor you know and I was seeing him already because I was just I was just full of questions 
And I remember sitting in his office one day and we were talking and I said, let's talk about dinosaurs. <laughs> the Bible doesn't really cover dinosaurs at all. This is a pretty significant creature that existed. And there's just, there's, there's no, you know, there's no discussion of it at all. It's, you know, humans and horses and snakes and normal animals. And there's no discussion of, Man. you know, pre-human and dinosaur and all this crazy shit. But that first chapter of that book, you know, talks about the beginning of the earth. Genesis. Genesis talks about the formation of the earth. And then it's, by the end of Genesis, humans. How many hundreds of millions, billions of years did that one to just kind of gloss over. So I was really confused, you know. Especially when you realize that Cain and Abel were the ones that had to, like, repopulate the earth. Right, yeah, and then it all started with two people. And, you know, yeah, there are lots of things that that book puts out that... Don't make sense. Somebody with a brain sense. can question. <laughs> and I was, I was quietly questioning, you know, those things. I will interject once again, Michael Ledwith and his book, Saving Jesus, for anyone who questions the Bible. It's a great book. That, the, hard, the first chapter, if you can get through the first chapter in the Bible and still believe everything afterwards, I mean, that's amazing because the first chapter is the, probably one of the most unbelievable parts of the Bible. Yeah, the first and last chapter of that, it's just yeah. marked or, you know, book ended with hard to believe things. Um but, you know, so, so, you know, now I, so this is probably, let's see, my daughter was born in 2001. We moved back to Denver in 2003. So 2003 to 2006, about those three years, that was probably the rapid descent. Um, because that's when I was really being, uh, being in this world surrounded by designers who are not going to church. Um, and then you move into towards 2006 and the economy goes to shit. I lost my job. Um, like so many people did in 2006, I was also separated, uh, from my, from my first wife and was living in a separate apartment and, and, you know, going through a lot, a lot of, a lot of struggles. Um, we ended up reconciling. I moved back home. But I was really having a hard time with the idea of who God is, you know. And when I say God, I'm talking about where the Bible says he's capital G God and he's got a white beard and he sits on a cloud. And, you know, that, that, that God, that God that we're taught to fear and love. The big man. The, the, the big man, the, the holy trinity, the whole, that whole thing. I more and more there was so much doubt and I don't remember when this was this 2008 maybe I'm guessing I'm out to lunch with my mother-in-law she was in town visiting for for some reason and I'm out to lunch with her I think it was just she and I and some some other some other friends anyway and I'm telling her this story about how I feel let down by God, how I feel my faith tested and how I'm not believing as much. And I'm telling her these things that are going on in my life that I, I feel like I felt like I was faithful and I felt like God wasn't living up to his end of the bargain. And if I could put that whole sentence in, in air quotes, I would. Um, oh, she laid into me. She, <laughs> not, not yelling, but just talking to me from the, the depth of faith from a lifelong Christian. And she told me, it is not God's job to give you a job. You know, yeah, the economy was shit and you lost your job and your own business is not doing well. That's not God's responsibility. 
And it really hit home. It really, it really made me think, you know, what is this, what is my relationship with this God? This is a very interesting um, part of the story because I haven't heard it before. Mm. But when you get to the part that you're going to get to, it's interesting that she's told you this and yet you chose to believe what you're going to tell everyone. Wait, wait, what hashtag spoiler alert. Well, I'm just setting it up because this is a, this is, I think a very important part for people to anchor into right now that your, that conversation that I had with my mother-in-law, um, over tacos, by the way, I love Mexican food. So I go home. And that next day, I'm down. I worked from home. I had a home office down in the basement. And I was down in my office, and I was, you know, wrestling with what she said. And I just started crying. I was just bawling, and I had all this emotion come come up. And I just kind of did that thing that a lot of Christians talk about doing. And, you know, I think it's bullshit, but whatever. Um, but I did it. I laid, I laid it on, I laid it on the feet before my Lord. I said, I cannot do this. I am not handling my life. I need, I'm turning it over to you here. You take my problems and concerns and I put my faith in you and you lead me and I'll follow. And I did, I, I, I did, I did that thing that all Christians want to do. It's a banner moment, and I did it. And this is not an exaggeration. Within two hours, the phone rang. My phone never rang, but the phone rang. And that was a miracle in and of itself that the phone rang. Because <laughs> you had no clients? Yeah. So the phone rings, and it was a company out in Irvine, California, that I applied to like eight months ago. I had completely forgotten about it. I was like, yeah, they didn't call me back. It was like nothing. And and the guy was like, you're like exactly what we're looking for. Can you come out to California and be with us? You know, we're interested in bringing on board. I'm like, holy hell, Jesus, <laughs> thank you. You know, right? Like, God, help a brother out. <laughs> I mean, if that's not clear, crystal fucking clear, divine intervention god i need help ding a ling a ling answer the phone hey got a job for you so i fly to california do the interview you're you're what we need blah 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 we need to get these two projects when we close these two projects we'll make you an offer the economy was still shit they didn't close the two projects Ergo, I didn't get the job, and in my mind, God didn't close the deal. <laughs> and I, I, I swear, not to God, I just swear, I swear I did not have expectations. I did not lay this before my God and said, if you... Get me a job. I will be the most faith. I mean, you will have won a banner Christian soldier for the rest of his life, right? I, I did not put conditions on it. If you do this, I will be this. But after I didn't get the job, what I realized is... There's no God because if there was, he would have closed that deal. God's in the business of having Christians because the so church the church needs the money. So God needs the Christian soldiers to give the money to the church. So if, if there was a God, he would have closed that freaking deal and I would have been – now, now, now th th this is the point you guys 
want me to acknowledge, and I, I'd never say, I know you wish I would say this, but if that would have happened, I would have stayed married, I would have moved to California, all these things would have happened, I would have had this job, everything would have been great, I would not have gone to China. I would not have married my beautiful wife. I would have not had a whole litany of experience experiences. But 100% blamed God. Or no, I shouldn't say I blamed God. I didn't I stopped blaming God the moment my my ex-mother-in-law, you know, admonished me on what it means to be a, a Christian. I just stopped believing at that moment when that job didn't happen and I felt the wheels come off that cart and going to China was a failure and doing all these things was a failure. To me, all of that was the proof of the, the God does not exist. Or at least, you know, the, the God that you portrayed as being the God. And, and, you know, there's so many different angles that we could come to from this, but, you know, maybe he didn't, he didn't want you to believe in that God, which is a false God in my opinion. I mean, man has made this God to be a, in the image of man. But do you realize you just said he two separate times and you've told me God is not a him. Well, and you, because of the conditioning, you but you, it, because we're all conditioned and this is part of the problem. This is what I don't like. And you guys, when we were, you know, drinking whiskey and you were, you know, laying into me about a part of this story, I think I had a problem or have a problem with this idea that he's a he and, and I think we need uh, Jordan Peterson on the podcast. Here <laughs> <to the subject. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think though with Brian, like seriously, I wouldn't I wouldn't sit there and pick on Lisa too much. We as a society have always been trained to think of God as a he. You know, yeah. it's, it's, and you're gonna you're gonna have to help a brother out because I don't know who Jordan Peterson is. He's the guy I was listening to the other day. I told you he did that. Oh, I'm sorry, he's the guy that doesn't refuses to use pronouns for people that aren't who they are. Oh, is he Canadian? Yeah, the Canadian guy. I thought that was Trudeau or what Trudeau's no, our no, prime no. minister. He's quite the opposite. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when I meant Canadian, I meant the country of Canada. That, yeah, he's Canadian. No, no, I'm, uh, not to sidetrack on your topic, but he's just a guy that, like, Canada was trying to pass a law that says if someone says they're a girl, even though they're not, you have to use the pronoun she or her. And Jordan's like, no. <laughs> Basically, I'm a psychologist. That's stupid. And no, that's not. That's not. Doing. Okay, that's a little bit. I generalize it, Nicole, for the sake of the podcast. He doesn't want to use the 7,500 other gender terms other than he and she. Well, anyway, I I just think it was – it's interesting, you know, Lisa, that you just said he – maybe he didn't want you to do that. And it's – I mean, it's everywhere. No, and I don't think – I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that there's a gender because I don't believe that God is – God isn't in the flesh. God is an energy. God is a source. He's an energy source. So God you just is said love. He's an energy source. Because I've been trained and programmed to to say that. So, you know, prime creator or it, you know, that's what I feel in my heart. But yeah, I, I did say he. I mean, obviously you had these expectations that okay, I'm really going didn't. to but, but they had to be underlying expectations really? that I'm going to turn my life over to you. Oh, the phone rang. This must be God. I swear you know, what I if it... did not have expectations and that I was thinking at it strictly from a business development point of view. Laugh, <laughs> if you will. I, I really know. was looking at it. Like, it's a business deal. I got exactly. Going. Okay, so you had business That's expectations. What What's that? You had business expectations. I didn't know. No. I, when I say that, it was strictly in hindsight. Absolutely no. And I was clear when I first said the, that part of the story. I did not have expectations. I did the 
turn it over for you. You lead me. I'll follow. Okay. So just for clarification, just for clarification for the audience, because there's a huge chunk missing out of here and it's not clear right now. After, after Brian didn't get the job and he lost all faith that, you know, if there was a God, he, why was he presented with an opportunity that never actually happened and then ended up going to China where his whole marriage fell apart. His I don't relationship. There at all. I I know his relationship with his daughter became eventually strained uh, from him being so far away. You lost your ho- you were homeless for how long were you homeless? Uh, eight months or so. Okay, eight months homeless in China. You know all of these things happened to you, and yeah. so this made you question: How could there be a God? If I surrendered to you further, it made me further question. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe God wanted you you to be a country music star because you got so much bad shit happening. (laughs) But I, I so (laughs) completely for me. And again, you've got to understand who I am for me. That was it. There was, there's no further discussion that ended it when that job fell through. And in, and I swear no expectations going in, and I just look at it all in hindsight. If I would have gotten the job, I would have been, you know, the Bible basher but probably. That, okay, that's but it I'm didn't just... happen, and at that moment, it was a clean break. There is no God, and I laugh inside. I laugh inside my head every time I say, thank God, or, you know, just something like, like I use heat. Just, say just like God. that. It's like, I just I was like, oh, thank God. I was like, oh, fuck, I don't believe in God. Why did I just thank him? But there had to have been an expectation for you to say, because I didn't get that job, I just, boom, didn't believe I, I him. I really don't know why you guys don't believe me when I say I'm saying that strictly <laughs> in hindsight. So then why? When I look back on that event, I'm saying if he would have, I would have been a Christian for life. But he didn't, and I'm not. Okay, maybe I so. Did not, I did not say that going in. But I look back on it and said, man, he missed an opportunity. So, okay. So the expectation, Brian, is the the reason why we're saying there's an expectation is because you you are stating that because he didn't follow through in the way that you thought that he would, given what you were taught through all your Bible studies and how much devotion you gave through, whether it was just because it was societal or faith, it doesn't matter, but you devoted yourself, that it fell through. It didn't okay. amount to anything at the end of the day. That is not accurate. I The whole time you were talking, I was shaking my head. In the moment. That doesn't mean the- I'm wrong, by the way, just because you're shaking your head. <laughs> Well, but you're putting you're putting meaning on my life that is incorrect. I've never had expectations, and you guys keep you guys want so badly for me to say, "Oh, I had an expectation that I was going to get a job." Thank you, Jesus. No, I never had that expectation. We didn't so say you that. You're to assuming. Say, no. Oh, need to stop saying. Oh, but didn't you really have an expectation? No, <laughs> absolutely, one hundred percent. I did not have an expectation. I look back on it and say, wow. You did have an expectation. You had an expectation. expectation. That is hindsight. You had an expectation that God was supposed to do something differently than what he did in in the way you believed it. That's where the expectation is. We're not saying that your expectation was to get a job from God. We're not saying that. But there was. was But what, what, what happened? When the job fell through, it was just a realization. Oh, that whole time I spent on my knees praying to somebody for help? Well, that was foolish. And I really hope you guys can hear the difference between an expectation, God do this and I'll be faithful, and I look back and said, oh, there is no God to begin with. So how stupid. The phone call was a coincidence. I know you love when I use that word, but it absolutely was. The phone call happening two hours of me having that moment was an absolute coincidence. Okay, there so let's, no talk, let's talk about the phone the call. Of the economy being bad, the company didn't get their job, ergo I didn't get my job. There okay, is no Brian? God. All right, 
We, we use this is a the, depressing podcast so far. You, <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about the phone call. God is not dead. <laughs> because the phone call, you are assuming, and I know that you really see this very differently. And I'm okay to I say you see it. why you won't listen to me. It's because it's not a matter of listening to you. It's that we see it differently than you see it. Okay, you're looking at it through a completely different lens than we are. And that's yes. all it is. So, but it doesn't mean I went into it with expectations. You guys keep seeming to <laughs> I don't think you only went, say I want no. an expectation. I don't okay. think you went into it with expectations. I don't, I'm not saying that. I don't, I don't know what Nicole's saying. I don't think she is, but I don't think you went into it with expectations, but I think the hindsight, when you looked back at it with hindsight, there was an unsaid expectation there that, that had you said it yourself, there was had a- you gotten the job, you would have had a, a Christian, sure, that, a faithful it, Christian man for life. But that was not an expectation either way. My expectation, an expectation is God, if you make my phone ring and I get a job out of it, I'll be faithful for the rest of my life. That's an expectation. I didn't. I just said, I will follow you. You're the okay. phone rang. You're- Yes, at the time, I thought it was because of that conversation. But the moment I didn't get the job, the realization, the clarity, the same clarity that you guys talk about and what you feel, the clarity was, what a waste of time. Okay, I really want... There was nobody out there to talk to. There was nobody out there to ask for guidance for. I am on my own. Okay, I really would like to depart the expectation conversation right now. Um, Stop and, trying to put it on me. And talk about the phone call. Because you, we talked about this on Sunday. You perceive the phone call as God dropping the ball in a way. In a sense of he had an opportunity to have a devout Christian stay with him or not. If, and he, if, failed if, the bus- uh, he failed to close the business deal. All right. And was so, the proof that there's no God. Now, I asked you, what if you looked at the phone call differently? What if you looked at the phone call as actually God not dropping the ball, but offering you a completely different deal that you didn't even know existed? And, and I am open to that possibility Aside from the fact that what ended up happening is I realized that there is no God. I didn't realize, oh, maybe there's another path. And, and I'm very open to, to that idea. That concept makes a lot of sense. That was just the beginning of the journey, Brian. Pay attention to the rest of the journey. What happened for me, though, was there is no God. There is no journey. So my journey ended. Even though the journey went on and it brought me to where I am today, the journey continued. I had experiences in my mind. The word journey and God stopped. And I just went on a life journey, not a journey with some creator, God, whatever you guys want to call it. And maybe that, you know, is part of the learning, part of the life lesson here that you had to let go of this belief that there was this man in the sky that was somehow directing and guiding your life. And that this journey that you're on is really about you because it all, you know, God is in us and we are in control. I really want to talk about this whole idea of God letting us down when we fall to our knees and we ask for help and we don't receive it in the way that we believe it should be coming or the way that we're taught that it's supposed to be coming, you know, and, and, and I really don't, Brian, just let me talk. And I'm the expectation that I'm talking about is likely a program belief through the, the Bible studies, the church and all that of how God's supposed to interact with you. Okay, that it's so I, deeply I absolutely understand that. Okay, so it's so deeply um, programmed in you that it doesn't feel like it's an expectation anymore <laughs> because it's just 
in you from what every what you've been taught over years and years and years. And and, and you know the 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 rational mind says you're absolutely right. It didn't feel like that way for me though. It, it didn't it didn't feel like that was what was happening. I mean, it really it's it's apparently it's hard to explain because I'm not doing a good job of explaining it. It really felt like, I mean, clarity is the word that comes to me. It's like, wow, what a, what a colossal waste of time for me to think there was a God. Which really, there, which really ultimately likely was what a colossal waste of time to believe in other people's beliefs of what God is. That's a good, yeah. I think yeah, that's was, a good way to think about it. I think it was exactly what, you were on your knees and you were begging, you were turning over to him. And I think he gave you exactly what was intended to be given to you in this lifetime at that moment was this full fucking clarity that this is a colossal waste of time to believe in this God that is outside of me. I I mean, I think you got exactly what you asked for. I don't know that is an interesting idea. And that's, I don't think that, it's such a bad thing, nor I, I, and I, I don't know if it sounds like Nicole and I are judging you and saying like, you should, you should just have kept believing God, like we're your mother-in-law. Cause that's, that's not what we're saying. We feel like there was some underlying expectation that turned you into this. Oh, okay. That's why I don't believe in God. But I think the end result was exactly the path that he put you on that, well, the, the, that you asked for and that you were able to turn on to because you did surrender yourself. To but him. the big difference between what you guys are saying, and I, and I understand that you're not approaching it the same way that my, my ex mother-in-law did, but the big difference is you're still seeing a hand in my journey from some outside influence. Okay, but that's because that's because I'm saying no. Boom. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. And there's a reason why you see it that way and Lisa and I see it a different way. Michael, how do you see it? Like do you see I see it as I see it as all four of us have different gods. I mean, really, we're not we can't be certain on what God is or who is or anything like that. So no matter how close Lisa, you and Nicole like uh are are within your certain spirituality, I'm sure if you get down to the details, you'd find differences. And I think what Brian is basically saying is, this is not my God. This is not the person that, or the thing that I believe in as God. I'm more curious on like what Brian believes in now. Like, I mean, he's got to believe in something. No, there's nothing. There is no, there is no. So at this point, you like, we're dead, we're worm food. Yep. There is, there is nothing to so when our you hear, like when you go back to the podcast where you have like the, uh, uh, you know, the Ashaka records or whatever it's called, talk uh, to you. Uh, Ashaka. <laughs> Shakira, Shakira, my Shakira records. Shakira records. Talk. <laughs> and they're like, you know, they're, they're trying to tell you about your past lives. Did you, in the back of your mind during that podcast go, this is just full of shit. Well, I believe I said that during that podcast that I said I don't believe in anything. There was times in the podcast, though. There was times in the podcast where I remember you're like, "Huh, that does make sense." It, 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 it. A lot of what he has selective memory. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there, there's a lot. I, mean, I, 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 I love that podcast because I wasn't on it, so I was a listener. As like, I, I got to listen in as a uh, to hear the whole thing. And I felt as a listener, you were thinking, okay, this person kind of knows what they're talking about. You know, there's a lot that resonated with me and it made it, you know, it made sense in the moment, just like when Lisa and Nicole, you know, were talking about this idea and what they presented, you know, on, on Sunday. Sure. It makes, it makes sense. And it's a very intriguing way to look at things, uh, it's it's a nicer way to look at things rather I, I than. I believe thinking, you called it poetic. <laughs> yes, it's a poetic way to look at life rather than just believing there is absolutely nothing. Okay, so for our listeners, you know, unfortunately, we didn't record this conversation we had on Sunday, which I had wished we had because it would have been great for our listeners. But what is it, the takeaway, what Nicole and I 
you know, our opinion of it and the way that we see it. What is it that you, what it, what is that? How did you interpret that? I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful way to think about life. What that is, what did we say? That there's, that there's an, that there's an energy, that there's a energy that connects us. You know, this is something we've talked about with a lot of guests, um, that there's, there's, there's more, there's different ways to look at life than to just think I'm, you know, just a couple of atoms bouncing around, you know, on my way to, to death, that there can be meaning to, to what I'm doing, that there, I, I think the bigger thing that you guys opened my eyes to on Sunday is that there's more to appreciate over the last seven years, I would say, because I'm going to guess that's about the time that the story really, that falling on the knees and going to China and now, I'm guessing that's been about the last seven seven years, seven or eight years. That well, you said it was the downturn of the economy, which was really 2007 well, was, to 2009. Yeah, well, I moved to China in 2012. So this um, is 2011? It had, it had to have been the year before. It had to have been around 2011. Okay. It wouldn't have been too much farther. So you than. struggled throughout the entire downturn with oh, your own shit. company, mm. and because you had since 2006, two, since 2006, 2006 to 2011 sucked financially. 2006 to what year is it? 2018. Okay, 2006 to 2017 sucked <laughs> big time. It was a yeah, it was a stinking pile of horseshit. Well, maybe God wanted you to go through that stinky pile of horse shit just so you can be where you're at. You ever think about that? What Nicole and I were saying I that that was the answer to this surrender was, you know. Yeah, you, you wanted to surrender. You really need to surrender. Yeah, like we're you're believing in something that isn't even, you know, is man-made. This God that you believe in is something the church made up. It's not even real. Your marriage sucked. From what I understand, you yeah. said you were kind of an asshole before mm-hmm. when you're a nicer mm-hmm. asshole now so that's nice good <laughs> um you know and things have changed but but life experiences are what teach us you know and so we have to go through these life experiences to gain this knowing and this knowledge and it's painful and it hurts and it's and you know and it's real you know i've gone through i've surrendered myself to god and asked for guidance and and some of the stuff that I've gone through after that hasn't been a lot of fun. It hasn't been this fairy tale thing that we expect. You know, you ask for guidance and you think, oh, I'm going to meet, you know, I'm a woman. Okay, so I'm going to meet a prince and we're going to get on this white horse and have these beautiful children and live in a castle and love, you know, everything's going to be just great. And when that doesn't happen, you're like, what the fuck? But I thought here, my life was going to be good. Here's here's the difference I, I see between me and you and Nicole and probably a lot of our listeners, you guys see the bigger journey for whatever reason. You are capable of seeing the bigger journey. Now, the journey that I've been on the last 11 years, let's just say 10 years, let's call it a decade, the last decade, I wouldn't trade it in for anything. I am so glad I went through hell in China and homeless and struggled because I am who I am today because of that. I am developing an app that is going to be incredible. I got married to you. There are so many awesome things that happened. Hang on, because here's the, the punchline is I am that is I am a product of that equation. I know that. I know that who I am today is in large part because of the journey that I am on over the last decade, I don't give credit to anybody else. That's the difference. Other than the journey. You, other than the journey itself. You are saying God had a hand in it. I'm okay. saying the journey was great. Why? Thank, why do you think? You why do you think that the journey is outside of you? I don't think it's outside of me. I just don't call it God. I, I, I just. So the, maybe the, this is part of. 
This is part of the deprogramming of your old ideas of what God is and opening you up to what really God actually is. Oh, well, there's the million dollar question or statement right there. I mean, that's, that is a great way to look at it. And I'm nowhere near that. I am nowhere near ready to say I was wrong about who God was. I'm, I don't, now that's really interesting, Nicole. Wow. I think I am so much more comfortable thinking there is no God than having to, to, a new than having to reboot my whole life and thinking now there's a new God and I got to fucking be thankful again. Fuck that. <laughs> okay. But that, okay, that's all still part of the programming, you know, like, sure. because the programming that you went through before was like you had to be this devout person. You had to do all of these things in order to satisfy the certain God. Right. Whereas, I realized what you guys are talking about, there are no expectations. I realize that. Whereas with this God, you living in your joy is all that is required. You know, like, and I don't actually required is the totally wrong word to even use. But when you're in alignment with God, you're in your joy. Then then why? It just, it, it seems, it seems like my way of looking at it is cleaner. Because I get to say this, my life is beautiful. I can I can say it in a shorter sentence. You guys have to say my life is beautiful because of this great creator. No, like, I don't. Do that. I, I don't. Well, I don't, that I don't know, but I, okay, but I don't say life. that. See, here's the thing: I don't say it's because of this creator. It's it's. Then what's the point of this conversation? It's because you see the creator as something outside of you and I see the creator as part of me and so if I'm happy I'm it's it's just like you don't even it's not even a thought like I don't even have to think about creator you know because it's just part of me okay well then that's exactly how I feel so how how am I different than you guys well because you don't believe that creator exists but I don't believe based on what you just said I don't believe anything differently than you. I just don't believe that there's any God. I know. So here's this. Exactly. So what the, what this whole journey has been is to help you completely deprogram yourself and break down the old construct of what God was taught to you to be so that you could rebuild yourself within to emulate it without even having to think about it anymore. God, you are just an expression. We've yeah, you about are an expression of God. I said that to me, God is just an energy force. This, all, you know, all the universes and everything that there is requires energy. And I believe God is that energy force. God is that love that runs through all of us. And there are no expectations. It's all our individual. He's like... If we're energy, we're just a part, we're just an expression of that energy. But There's... that, to me, you guys seem like you're going out of your way to keep saying there's a God when what you're just saying is what I believe in. We're, we're just here. We're bouncing around. That is what energy is. Energy just bounces around. We are here just bouncing around. Maybe we're connected. Okay. Maybe there's some sort of connection between, between everybody. What you guys are saying, there is... There's no God. I mean, I, I'd like you guys to analyze what you're I, looking at and to say, you know what, Brian? You're right. There is no God. There's energy. But, okay, and for you guys to call energy God, I think, is really, really misguided. Why? I, I can wrap my head around that. I can, I can see where you're coming from, where I think that it is sounder to – to say there is no I don't. God. I don't at all. In fact, it doesn't make any well, fucking sense to me. It doesn't so make fucking any fucking stupid. sense to me as someone who studies science to make such a statement as that. Because energy is all cause and effect. Energy cannot be uh, destroyed. So I don't understand how, where does energy come from? Like, if you don't understand that there's some sort of creation... That's... Oh, 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 creation, not creator. Well, at this point, it's semantics. 
Because nah. you're, you're, uh, you're, I you're, I explain to a church and tell them that God is the same as. But the I'm Big not. Bang. I'm not part of the no, church. I'm not talking about church. You're assuming that God belongs to the church, and it does not. God does no, not belong thanks. to the church. Church. The beginning of the universe, the Big Bang, is the beginning of energy. It does not mean any intelligent entity put that into motion. It is a cosmic coincidence. Actually, the Big Bang has been sort of disproven lately. Exactly. But, I was going to say the same thing. So how was, how were, what's your opinion as far as how all the, the, word the planets Big Bang and the been, universe all and all started. that, how was everything created? They're going to describe a Big Bang. They're just not going to use the words to describe, to, to say Big Bang. So please go ahead and say how it was just one massive energy creation. But let's not use the term big or bang. Go. Crickets. Wait, wait. Are you trying to debate on the Big Bang right now? <laughs> no. I mean, you guys were saying there's, the Big Bang has been disproven, but the way they disproved it is basically by saying it was still one massive energy point. Well, it's an energy that's still growing. Yes, exactly. The Big Bang started... And we're still growing. Nobody ever said the Big Bang where was most, where most, Yeah, I know. Ah. But most of the theories were like it, it blew up from like some small micro point, And as, uh, you know, as the energy starts to be depleted, things slow down. And that's not what's happening. But I don't it started think that. from a small micro point. That's all I'm but saying. I, the energy I, started from one point in the universe and is continuing to expand. It was one giant energy creation. It does not. All I'm saying is no matter what you call it, Big Bang or whatever the hell they're trying to call it now. It started from one point. When I hear you guys talk about creator, creator means put into motion, not things were just perfect in a Petri dish and life took off. This thing happened. You, you have to, when you use the term creator, prime creator, whatever, you're assuming something existed before everything else to put it into motion, to roll the dice, to jumpstart the car. And you are too, though. Yeah, no, I don't know. You're, don't, you're, don't, you're no. believing in something that blew up or, yeah. or some pinpoint Where energy. did it come from? That existed. Not yeah. put into motion by some prime. Well, then what put it in motion? It just happened. Well, what what, what do you put it in motion? Oh, Sorry, Michael, go ahead. I'm, no, seriously, like, what put it in motion? I, I don't see the difference. I don't either. That's why I'm confused. That's why I'm it asking. It just you. Happened. Who, what energy put it into motion? Stop putting a who or what on it. Stop putting a he or she on it. The conditions were right in this empty space that something happened. A something caused something to happen, and it was just the conditions were perfect. When you put the word creator on it, that means that existed before the thing happened. And Brian, Brian you do not want to see our point. And I mean, I, I can understand that, but like, we're just saying there's something behind that something. Yeah. And you we keep going through this. N not, yeah, see, there's, you're, you guys are 75% of the population on this podcast. Intelligence. I'm just saying the conditions were right. Oh, well, maybe everything is created from the asshole. You know, at this point, like, I really don't understand <laughs> where you're coming from with this. It makes no sense from someone who's got such a logical mind to be like saying like, I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what I firmly believe is that you have such a trigger and hang up on God in that what you were taught God to be that any sort of association with that being in the sense of how things were created and started is just so far beyond your ability to accept because of everything of how it was taught to you growing up. Okay, that's that's one remote Canadian opinion, and it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't affect me because. Why I, does my maple leaf have to be part of that? <laughs> there, there, there's no, I mean, there's there's no there's no God to me, and I what you know the thing that I find the most interesting in all the conversations we've had on and off air is how. You guys can never see outside of your own opinion, ever. I, I don't think I've ever seen you guys. This is such the pot calling the kettle black. But you are so bent. You are so hell bent on Michael and I seeing your opinion. But you can never, ever be challenged to think outside of your own opinion. Uh, Michael, 
<laughs> we, I don't even know, you know how many times I no, can no, have this conversation with Brian. Well, no, I, okay, here's me just gathering it all back together. I really do believe, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. We just have four, four different theories. And I think Lisa and Nicole's theory, they blend a lot of their theories together. And where Brian and I, I mean, I'm not on Brian's side on this when it comes to what he believes or doesn't believe, but we all have like different opinions of what we believe. And I don't think any one of us can be certain on shit. I mean, it's really, it's really, it's like, why, that's do, why do you do that, Brian? I, I, you know, okay. Because the way you talk says you are so certain how? about your way. And you, the way that you tell me how wrong I am. I don't tell you how wrong you are. are I have right. never said, I have never, okay, I'm not going to say never. You have said how wrong I am about what I believe about the, the creation of the universe. You're like, I don't even know what you believe in. That just doesn't even make any sense. I didn't sense. say you were wrong. I said I don't understand. I don't understand how you can come from that. And I just want to say, you have such selective memory. It's so annoying because you gang up on Lisa time and time again for her not remembering certain things. <laughs> but when it comes to you, how many times do I have to tell you this? And I'm going to say it on this podcast because it'll be recorded and I'm never going to say it again. And so all the listeners can hear it. And Brian, I pray to God that it is going to be ingrained in your brain forever now, like permanently well, branded. Deaf ears because there is no God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not. Okay. I do not hold all of my beliefs in 100% certainty and listen to what you say and just say, yeah, no, don't, don't believe it. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. I believe there Everyone has a valid point and brings up great points. Michael has brought up things that make me think differently. You brought up things that make me think differently as well as Lisa and certain certain guests have done the same. But what you're talking about is that there are certain issues, okay, that I cannot believe differently in how I feel because of the experiences I have had that you have not had and cannot right. understand otherwise. And Absolutely. I will... And I will not change the way I believe in them because I believe them with such certainty and knowing within me from what I have experienced, not because of what someone's told me, but because of what I have experienced within. And I just can't believe differently because of that. I, and that makes sense. And I can't believe. So I want it to be said, this is now the fourth time I'm telling you this. I am never going to repeat that again to you, so please understand do you, do you, it. Do you, not, do you not realize, do you not hear yourself telling me you're wrong about the Big Bang? And it's like, I'm not wrong about the Big Bang. I'm not wrong about the cosmic coincidence that happened. I, did, I have you, never you, said you are wrong. wrong. I said I don't understand. There's a difference. I find it fascinating that we were able to find someone with such an opposing opinion to be on this podcast it's just it makes me so happy <laughs> you mean nicole's opposing opinion <laughs> no just but oh it's just amazing to me the diversity in people and i'm just really grateful because you know, at the end of the day, I don't think that really anybody's right or anybody's wrong. It's, it is about our own journey and it is about just our own experiences and experiencing life and choosing to experience this way. And, and whether you're right or you're wrong or Nicole and I are right or wrong, like it doesn't fucking matter. At the end of the day, you're going to go through this life and you're going to gain, your soul will gain some experiences from the point of view that you that you have, whether it stays the same or changes. Cause I, as you told your story, you know, when you were a young kid and through college, you believed a certain thing. And now for the past decade, decade you've believed something completely different. And who's not to say that five years from now that could completely shift and you're going to have another totally different perspective on things. Sure. And are any of them really right or any of them really wrong? 
you know, it, that they just are part of who we are and they help our perspective and our journey and, and to gain, right. gain the experiences and the knowledge that we have. I agree with 99.9% .9 of what you said. It was awesome. I mean, it was well spoken. You, but you, you said that our experiences affect our soul. And to me, it's, it just affects our mind. <laughs> it, it affects my life. I knew when I said oh. soul that I was like, yeah, it's not going to buy into the soul thing. But, Although, but there's I a can... big part of me that thinks he's totally full of shit. I mean, he's only I know. Pretending. I'm sorry, but are you telling me that oh. you love Lisa with your mind? Yeah. Only you only love Lisa with your mind. The word soul has this connotation of other lives and off You're such... planet, off body experience that I'm not willing to. You're such an interesting bird, Brian. <laughs> I would say, yeah, he probably loves her with his mind. I would no, but only his mind? Only his mind? Yeah, I think we just create the chemicals of love, like I told you in many podcasts ago. Oh, yeah, ago. I forgot who we're dealing with here on the subject. That was my, first, it. That was my first episode. <laughs> I would love to hear from our listeners, you know, just what some of their opinions are about this and and their journeys, you know, info at enlightenup.us if you want to email us or... We'll post this on YouTube and you can leave comments. But wow, I was cool. really, really love to hear. Because I think that there's a, you know, I think that this is something that is real, that people really do struggle with. Like, you know, you're, you're, you're taught a certain way. You're taught about this certain God. There's this whole reprogramming phase when you realize that you've been sold a fucking bill of goods, that this is bullshit. And where you know you came out where you are and i'm sure a lot of people have come out so, just like now what do i do now what do i believe what the fuck is real is it the big thing is it dark? like what the hell is going on and what is real and who can i believe in and this none of this makes any sense to me i think that this is a real thing i just want to say to brian because i don't think you realize this brian but i completely resonate with your inability to resonate with what God is. Growing up, growing up in like in a Catholic church, I was raised Catholic and listening to everything that I listened to through um, all my experiences with the church and being raised in a Catholic school. I really didn't like their version of God. And because of that, I didn't like even using the word God. Mm. And the, when you I was in, the word God. in my late teenage years, when I started to learn about other world religions is when I was like, oh, okay, well, I can gravitate more with this. And uh, that's yeah. what kind of put me more into spirituality and started to understand like, well, I, I, and I, I, it's only in the last two years that I feel more comfortable using the term God. I knew I actually haven't used the term God up until maybe a year or two ago. And it's only because I've become comfortable with this idea of who God is within me, not from what the church has told me who God is, that I can actually be okay talking about it now and using that term. But up until then, it was source energy. It was the universe. It was something else. I just couldn't use the term God. I didn't like it because it triggered so much of the lies that I felt I was being fed through the church. So I actually, yeah. I resonate. Yeah. I resonate with you and your inability to do that. So I, I'm a, I totally get it. But you know I, what's interesting about what you just said I never, I've never felt that way. I mean, you, 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 and I've heard you say this before, you know, that you, you feel, you remember hearing, you felt that they were lies. It's like you, you, you felt this disconnect with the church because they lied to you. I don't, I don't ever remember feeling that way. But that's because I, you didn't have faith I, anyways. I, you were just I doing do it for societal feel. reasons. You, you weren't doing it for faith. Well, not, well, I don't know because I do feel that they're lies. 
I mean, when I look at it, again, hindsight, when I look at it, it's like, oh, yeah, this is all a bunch of shit. I think you realized at the time they were lies. You, you, you felt at the time, I'm being lied to. Something's not right. I need to do further investigation on my own. I never felt that. I just lived my life, lived my life, and I was like, oh, God doesn't exist. I'm like, huh, that was a bunch of shit. I mean, yes, we've come to very similar conclusions, but vastly, vastly different paths where you you felt the lie at the time. At the time, I never felt it was a lie, but when I look back on it, I'm like, huh, that, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, so all I'm saying is, is that I actually understand where you're coming from and why you feel the way you do in a sense of, not being able, like, you know, we all have certain triggers. We have, there are certain words that we just, like, can't wrap our head around because of, like, all the different connotations that have been added around it. Such as chemtrails. <laughs> or shoes. <laughs> Fuck shoes. So. That was for all my true fans that are listening. You know, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I, 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 if you're a fan of Brian, hey, Linda, this is for you. Fuck shoes. If you're a fan of Brian. Let us know because I'm not so sure right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be signing autographs on the cruise. So, anyways, so um, yeah. But you you also mentioned something, and maybe this can be a future a uh, future uh, podcast because you and I also did something that was very similar, and it was looking in you know moving from Christianity. And looking at world religions, world religions are fascinating. And that, I think, is a big part of the lie to me. When you really start to understand world religion, you can really start to understand the, the scope of the, the con. Um, so maybe maybe we can talk about that later because I don't think we have time today. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what, Michael? Well, Brian's limited to only his life on this earth. We're you, us three. We're good to go. <laughs> yeah, let's the world. Time is money. Come on. <laughs> All those business okay, deals, okay, God's dealing this question, out. No, I got. I got to ask this question first. Okay, so Brian, going back to your beliefs, do you find awesome. like there's a certain like depressant, depressing feeling inside of you if you feel like this is it? No. I'm not. <laughs> I don't understand that. It's like I have a, I have a. The only thing depressing in my life is that my daughter won't talk to me. Um, aside from that, um, man, there's whiskey and bacon and cigars. I mean, and can, I feel like that can only go so far because I tried that out a lot of times. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, oh, he didn't say sex. I didn't say my <laughs> Oh, holy hell! I'm gonna pay for that one. <laughs> um, Blowjobs are out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, wait, you know, Lisa, my dad listens to these magic I'm going to say whiskey, cigars, <laughs> bacon, and my wife. <laughs> Do not edit that, Nicole. <laughs> edit that, Nicole. Um, you know, I really, I, I don't have this out, this depressive outlook of the end of life. Now, I will, I will say death is the thing that is the most sad to me. The idea of me or somebody very close to me dying is the saddest thing I can imagine and get my head around. And I don't want to experience it, but I'm, I'm not thinking, Oh, can't wait till the next life. I don't, I don't care. I mean, my so life, gonna, you don't believe then you, then you don't believe anything in your Akashic records, even though they resonated with you. You know, and, and, and I, that, that was, you know, Michael brought that up earlier, and I think that was interesting. And yes, it did. The ideas resonated with me. Yes, the idea that I found solace in those temples in China resonated with me. But keep in mind, I'm also an architectural historian, and I was in one of the most architecturally historical places at the time when I'm in a temple. So why did it resonate with me? Can you tell me? Can anyone no, tell me? No, okay, but why? why okay, put that aside. Put put the historical shit aside. I'm talking about you keep referring. You've done this several times on the podcast, which I have to I have to say I find quite interesting. Where you keep referring to the path that you have been this enlightened being and you are here to experience the secular I do path. That to make 
fun of you guys. You do not see that. I'm mocking. I am doing that straight out of mockery of somebody telling me my past life I was a monk. The only reason I've ever said, oh, yeah, don't forget, I was already enlightened. Totally mocking the Akashic Records. I would have to be on this one. So, okay, so you don't believe in the Akashic Record reading one day? Not one iota. Okay. I, I wanted clarity on that because I wasn't sure. I was very curious about it. I was I was glad to be a part of the experience and have them read. Did I believe a single word she said? No. What about your Shakira records? <laughs> Shakira records? <laughs> They're great. All right. Well, you know what? I would like the audience. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna patient. actually ask the audience right now. I am begging you. Begging you on my hands and knees. Save Brian's soul. Hashtag save Brian's soul. (laughs) To please. (laughs) To please send us in your thoughts on Brian and this episode. And uh, please email us. Maybe you have some insights to share. Uh, We would love to hear from you on this. So info at enlightenup.us. Please, someone out there, help us out. Throw us a bone. You see what we deal with. Uh, That would be so great to hear from you on this topic and what your thoughts are on Brian's stance and everything. Maybe someone out there totally resonates with you, Brian, and is like team Brian. I know. Yeah. So uh, other than that, though, everyone, um, thanks for joining us again this week. Happy to have you here. And uh, we'll catch you next time.